Frank, then coach of 220. Um, smoking cannabis, taking a break, and training for a marathon. I'm getting strip searched by the guards. That's what's happened since the election. Grass and about half a gram of um, what do I call hash. They had a very good idea that I was in possession of cannabis, and it's against the law. I've got the wrong man. Technically, I don't feel great. It's ridiculous. I ran as an anti-corruption sort of candidate, and uh, sort of get things right, legalise cannabis, and face reality candidate. And I'm the one who is going to have to face reality now. Supposedly, I'm going to prison for actually doing that. Family are worried about me. Some of my friends think I'm mad to do it. And people who I know who would be as much into the cause as I was um, would actually think I was right to go to prison. Like, you know, people have been helping me this time around. like a sound enough man. He's only imposing the laws that are there. Oh, what I've been saying all along, like, that I think it's harmless and um, I'm a healthy sort of a guy. And uh, why would I want to damage my health? 128 days to prison. Countdown. Are you the man of the of the poster, are you? I am, yeah. You're Mr. Ming. What's the story? Uh, well, I have 40 days to pay a fine. Cook it. I figured as much, yeah. yeah. Good. He worked it out, and uh, hopefully, everyone, hopefully everyone has to work it out. You're not, uh, you're not going to pay it, I presume? That you're no, no, I'm not paying it, anyway. Okay. Definitely not. <laughs> you're hoping somebody else might? Oh, I'm hoping somebody else won't. Um, to a point. You're posting bills, though. Okay, you're not allowed to post bills. What say that? Well, it's the only way that uh, only way that someone who doesn't have any money can actually express their point. No matter what the negative points are, as far as litter is concerned, positive points are. Yeah. They yeah. outweigh. Yeah. 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 What's what the name? You feel you have to do it to get your point across. I do. Yeah. Yeah. I just have to take your name. Good. Good. So your name? Ming Alexandra. D R A. Well, I'm not sure where I'll be, but I, I'm fairly sure where I'll be on January the 29th. You can send the... And where will that be? Montjoy <laughs> Prison <laughs> in Dublin. <laughs> What's actually on them? Just uh, 40 days to go. Yeah. Can I go okay, now? That's fine. Have me wait. Okay. All right. Okay. Please welcome to the stage the wonderful Ming the Merciless. Last day as a free man. No, no, Friday. Friday. But your hair. Where did the idea? Where did it go? Where did the idea for the hair? Um, I got. I had dreadlocks and I got knits, and uh, <laughs> I combed them out, and uh, then my girlfriend got knits, and uh, I got them back, so I shaved off my hair, and uh, so I just leave the side bits on for the crack. Yeah, that's a good clue. I, 
<laughs> but it's, it's, it's I, I didn't think about it very much. It's obviously a, no. But I remember <laughs> the first time I saw you with it, and I was thinking, going, that's a fucking it's ridiculous haircut. <laughs> <laughs> In the audience, uh, by way of way of the count of three, how many people here think cannabis should be legalised? One, two, three. <laughs> How many people think it shouldn't? One, two, three. Yeah. Don't be afraid, you're in the dark. <laughs> One person over there and a cow down there. <laughs> <laughs> are both your folks alive? What? Both of my folks yeah, are what, what do they make? I mean, do they offer to pay the fine or the same? Well, they're, they're the typical strange Roscommon breed, I don't know. Is it, uh, <laughs> is it a Roscommon trait? But it's a trait that I, I've seen. Uh, Coming up to the election, I had to pay a £300 deposit and I spent a lot of money that I really didn't have up till then. I didn't have any money to pay the deposit. My father gave me £300 to pay it, just gave it to me. That's says, fair dues to you for what you're doing. And then a couple of months later, I got caught in possession of cannabis. Now, I knew full well what my campaign was about. I got caught with it and they were not. <laughs> 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 and did they offer to pay the fine or did they say? Oh, they were going to. They were, told, they were basically told not to pay the fine. You know that, right? I'd hate them. You know. What can you say? Like, right. say they were really scared for you, so they go, "I will pay it," but you can't. Uh, they can't pay it for you, you know, because it wouldn't be right. Going, you're going to go to prison rather than pay the fine. I'd go to prison rather than pay the fine. Right. Paying the fine would solve nothing. All it would do was do it uh, maintain the prison system. All right, cheers. Thanks very much. All right, thank you. And uh, I might be seeing you in a few minutes. <laughs> 26. Some nice friendly guard kicked us out of the foyer of the guard station. Why did he do that? Uh, but I suppose he didn't want any photographs taken of uh, the friendly guards doing their duty when Ming was being arrested, you know? But uh, he still hasn't been served, you know? He's standing there waiting. So it's a bit like, uh, it's a bit like any other government department when you go in there, you, you make you wait around for a while. Well, here he comes. They've sent him out again. There's Nike! <laughs> They said that uh, basically they'll come looking for me and uh, what were those people doing in here? <laughs> and uh, did you notify them and uh, stuff like that? You know, I felt very scared by the law. Early yesterday, my uh, father uh, came in and paid the fine. I found that out today, and just found it out there. And it was definitely my father, anyway. It sounded like uh, his mannerisms, anyway. So, um, it was always something that could have happened. That's life, and that's the way it is. The campaign was a success. Nothing can that doesn't take away anything from it. I was prepared to go to prison, and if they catch me again, I'm still prepared to go to prison. It's a stupid law. About 10 or 11 weeks ago I gave up uh, tobacco and I decided I'd plant uh, three cannabis seeds and they seem to be growing quite well. You could do with a bit more sun but you don't honestly expect that. Uh, tell me what happened yesterday. Um, well, we were relaxing after uh, our night out. One of the lads arrives back and he suspects that we, he, we, he was being followed. And uh, he said to me he wanted to throw away his pipe. 
and because I don't smoke tobacco, I said, no, don't throw it away. Uh, I don't care. I don't care if they come in. 20 minutes later, they did come in. Basically, uh, they, they possibly can do me for residue and left in the pipe, which is just the same as being caught with cannabis anyway. Yeah. Um, you expect them to call back again? I don't know. I haven't a clue. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what. They, you know, it's random, like, you know. Um, obviously, whenever someone is told, when it's said, do this or do that, they have to do it. Why, why they do it and when they do it, I don't know why, you know. I haven't a clue. I don't know what the point is, like, you know. What are they going to... It's it's weird, like, you know. You, you, you sit down and you look at it and you go, okay, they're going to keep busting me, like. There's three options here. I stay in the country and I keep smoking and eventually I end up in prison. Second one is, I don't stay in the country and I move to a place where I can smoke legally and nothing happens. The third option is, I stay in Ireland and I stop smoking. That's not going to happen. And that's the only option I have is the first one, stay here and I'm going to stay smoking because, you know, it's part of what I do with my life. And uh, that means, eventually, I, I'm going to commit the crime so many times because if they keep uh, following me uh, at the bit as, as regular as they do now, they're eventually going to put me in prison. Like. So um, why don't they just do it now? Like, what's the sus? Like, I don't get it. Like, um, like they know I was going smoking again today. Like, why didn't they just come after me again today and check me out? Why don't they follow me every day until they finally put this evil person away? Like, or fucking forget about it. You know, stop doing it over five or six years. It's ridiculous. Like, you know, a farcical situation. I think it's the biggest bag of stuff ever brought into a prison. Like. <laughs> God, what's in it? An awful lot of reading material. <laughs> I feel it was basically unjust and unfair, and it was it wasn't penalising me for littering. It was penalising me for uh, what I stand for and what I believe in. I don't think it's fair, but what can you do? Like they're just going to come after me and uh, chase me with the warrant otherwise. So I'm not going to be chased around the place. I'm just going to win and face whatever music they're playing at the moment in the country. Okay. <laughs> Hello, Mike. Hardest country in the world to get arrested in. Eh? They could have uh, taken me in if they wanted, but yeah. they didn't want to. It. It's obvious. And I just have to wait for them to serve the warrant on me, like, you know? Or wait for some fucking bastard to pay it, like. We're going to uh, Charlewa, uh, former home of uh, Gary Wada, former Queen's Park Rangers in Ireland International. And we're going from there to uh, Brussels and from Brussels to Amsterdam to run a marathon and to get exceptionally stoned legally. Very sore. It always gets worse as the day goes on. Moving around. Moving around makes it worse. That's fucking great, isn't it? Fish like they're just going by. <laughs> Hello. He will survive, but I don't know if it will be today. <laughs> um, they said, basically because of my cold last week, that that's what I'm getting stomach cramps from. And uh, they told me to uh, try it, and uh, basically if you get bad pains, stop. Take that out. Where am I going? Where do I go, do you know? Any idea? <laughs>
three hours and 30 minutes when you take away the seven minutes for when myself and yourself are having the two. My medal. It was an insight, you know, into the way that an awful lot of people live like. I was treated, treated grand, but I was mixing with murderers, pedophiles and uh, rapists, whatever, like, they're all there with due to circumstances, I suppose, at the end of the day. I don't just hate these people or anything, but it's a bit worrying, obviously. You don't know who the fuck you're dealing with. Someone might decide, oh, sure, I'll kill this bloke. What difference does it fucking make? One thing you need if you're selling tickets is people to buy them, and there's no one buying them at the moment, so it's a bit of a, a downer. Hello, everybody. Uh, thanks very much for turning up. Uh, the large crowd that did, and uh, uh, you've got ball, and the rest don't. Congratulations. I'm disappointed it doesn't come into it. I'm disappointed for everyone else. I, I have, I have uh, done no preparation for this gig because uh, I thought that's what a dope smoker would do. Uh, I, uh, I reckon actually that's the reason why like, Ming was hiring the hall, you know, 400 seats. And uh, I think if he was an amphetamine campaigner, uh, there'd be loads of people here. Uh, you know, the toilets would be packed. Be, uh, can't wait for gigs, can't, can't wait for gigs. Can't. But when you're, when you're a friend of the dopers, it's kind of like, um, Will you come to gig? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure, yeah. Yeah. And you know what they're all at home now watching the snooker. <laughs> Going, ah, something's bugging me, but I don't know what. Uh, that's right. I think drugs are are um are are uh what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, a hazard. Um, drugs are God's way of saying I can't be everywhere. <laughs> the result of my begging letters uh, as of uh, 12 o'clock today was a return of £20 on uh, 78 letters sent out, which means it cost me more to send out the letters than I actually got in return, which is fabulous. And if this ever does make TV, the people I sent them letters out to don't ever, ever bother getting in contact with me again. That's basically my message. Because the only people I like to hang around with are people who are my friends, and these are not my friends. There you go. Are you disappointed? Gutted, is the word. So how much money have you got now? I've got £630. Shocked look on the cameraman's face there. <laughs> So uh, you got another what? Three hundred and seventy. Three hundred and seventy to raise. Any ideas, plans? Um, I just go begging at home, basically. It's very hard though to go begging at home, and it's very hard to run in it. Uh, not because of the financial thing, but because of the the kick in the head to morale, like that uh, you get when uh, your friends and a lot of them who are earning twenty thousand pound a year plus don't actually uh, think you're worth twenty pound or your future. I look forward to the day and I see them in the gutter and I'll piss on them. Good afternoon, folks! My name is Johnny Musker and I'm going to do a show right here, right now, 
These are very sharp knives. Very dangerous. Oh, oh. <laughs> I know placing the shirt of danger on hang of death. <laughs> Ladies are going to like this. Right, you control the apple. Hey! Ladies and gentlemen, the surfboard of death is the most dangerous surfboard in the world. Apparently. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, make the merciless. Are oh, you taking a picture? In the European elections, I am calling for a moratorium on the production of genetically modified organisms, a move away from industrialized farming to organic farming, treatment of rubbish as a resource rather than a problem, cancellation of third world debt by the 31st of December of the year 2000, and you know the other one. Thank you. My name is Johnny Musker. I'm a street performer. This is how I make my living. If you enjoyed the show, give us a pound. And kids, if your dad takes you away like that and doesn't give you a pound for the funny man, he doesn't really love you. <laughs> Thanks very much. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks very much. Cheers. Thank you. Right. I'm now presenting Lord Luke Mink Flanagan with the hat. <laughs> With lots of cash in it. Thanks very much. I present you with the trolley of death. I'm off my fucking trolley. <laughs> my god, there's a hundred pound coin in there. One, two, three, four. Eight. Ten to forty quid basically. That's fucking excellent, John. Thank you. Brings me up to seven hundred pounds. Now Get a lift home. Wonga. You all right in there, Mike? Yeah. Oh, in the back here. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Doesn't add up. Seven. Nine hundred and seventy-five. We'd have to do something about that. Ring my father, basically, and uh, he's 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 basically driving around the town and uh, just get some money off him, basically, get twenty pound off him. Hello, ma'am. Do you have a daddy's mobile number? Okay, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. all right. Thank you. All right. All right. Thanks very much.
That's the car. Ah, great. The paint has gone out. Where's the notes in? Call to the courthouse. Hello, Daddy. What's you call it? I'm after leaving £25 in my bed, basically at home, and I didn't bring it. It's stupid now and all as it is. Do you have money until you get home to give it to me, basically? Do you? Yeah, and go it's the courthouse, yeah. Cheers, thanks. Bye. Yay! Problem solved. Hooray for mobile phone math. And uh, I'm ruining the nomination ballot. Okay, that's the uh, biggest relief of my life. Um, that's great. That's that's great. Okay. Okay. Thank Excellent. you. Okay, we have 20 minutes left. Right. <laughs> Listen, thanks very much. That's great. The line should be there and then. <laughs> What's the main message you want people to listen to? Well, the main message I want people to listen to is that uh, basically the Connor Coaster uh, region can actually be successful and can be viable. And uh, one of the ways I see this happening is a move towards organic farming. At the moment, we have numerous small farms around the west of Ireland uh, which are going out of business, uh, going out of business uh, to uh, industrialise farms. It's time to take the drugs market out of the hands of the mafia. It's time to put it into the legal tax economy and to control it in the only way that you can. So you'd legalise heroin? I'd legalise heroin in uh, the case of for uh, prescribed addicts. I think that uh, it's bad enough being a heroin addict without being treated as a criminal as well. My qualifications are that uh, basically I have an interest in European politics and uh, I uh, believe that my policies would uh, basically improve Europe. Okay, thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, what's happening tonight? I'm on the Vincent Brown show and uh, all the other candidates are going to be there with the exception of Dana. It's been filmed down the road, or it's been recorded down the road, and I'm also on prime time, which was recorded there last week. Damn. There's some pillocks playing into our hands as well. Connor Ulster has four small scale candidates like Ming in Galway City, named after the cartoon character Ming the Merciless. Properly called Luke Flanagan, he campaigns only on the internet. He favours legalising illicit drugs, including cannabis and even heroin. And he has another main message. The main message I want people to listen to is that uh, basically the Connacht Ulster uh, region can actually be successful and can be viable. And uh, one of the ways I see this happening is a move towards organic farming. Natural Law Party candidate is Paul Campbell. Fair enough, that's good. <laughs> that's nice. the sound, the party that's what I want. He campaigns entirely via the internet, then. <laughs> That's not true, lad. Like. That heroin bit should take about two, two, three percent off anything that's possible now, so... Because without explanation, it sounds bizarre. That'd like. be interesting if I couldn't get in, wouldn't it? See you later, Mike. What's going on, Lee? What's going on? Um, I'm not being allowed to participate in uh, a radio debate that's going on today on the 1 o'clock news, which will be listened to by about 400,000 people. And RT reckon that won't be of any disadvantage to me, which is a bit fucking strange, really. Why are you not allowed on? Uh, because, uh, I don't know. No, I, well, I'll give you the reason they give me. We'd love to be able to facilitate you and accommodate you, but unfortunately the programme is already full. Bollocks. 
just to let you know that all the candidates will be mentioned at the end of the programme. Hopefully we might be able to accommodate you sometime in the future, most likely after the election, because today is the last day. Hello, Mary. Hi, how are you? Hello, Mary. How's Mary? Not very I good. Uh, we haven't been invited out to the show, unfortunately. Why wasn't? We're not relevant. Campaign notified. Well, I don't know. You have to ask RT. Uh, because I, I've ran in two elections now, and I've been treated like crap by the media in the two of them, and I'm sick and tired of it. Uh, why is it up to RT to decide who's relevant? Like, let the people decide that. Surely. Okay. Have you ever had a door kicked down in the debate? Uh, you were not. Uh, you watch I it. I imagine it starts after the news, which is around ten past one. Okay. And when you do break in the door, shout, vote for Marion Harkins, she's the only one that's likely to change things. We promise you'll do that. Sure. I've been telling people to vote number two for Marion Harkins. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I have. Number one for me. That's fair enough. Right. That's fair enough. Good luck. It's too scared of elections that I'm going on the radio and I am not mad I am totally sane I have every right to be on the station and it's going to bloody happen are you locked out as well? oh that's cool here on the let me in this is totally undemocratic it's a joke we have every right to be on this station. Here you go. I am afraid I have Fine, a right to be in here. You have no right to be here. You're, you're on private property. I am on private property. It's not private property. Where am I going? I'm going into the studio. Where do you think I'm going? This is not private property. I know my rights. Believe me. <coughs> I'm not the accused of vandalizing. I'm going on the show. I have every right to go on it. I paid a thousand. Don't talk to me like that. I didn't say anything to you. You did. Excuse me. Why excuse me? <coughs> You're in my way. Excuse me. You do nothing about to, but talk Thomas about drugs continuously. You haven't brought it up once in this campaign. Excuse me. You're the one who's pushing this. Excuse me. Yes, sir. Where's the has gone into the Okay. Just. Excuse me. Okay, stunt is over. Stunt is not a stunt! You let go of me! You have no Fine. right! Leave it. I have as much right as anyone to be in this studio. And there's only one door to go, mate. So who are you? He's making a documentary. Let go of me! Let go of me! You do not have a right to do this! Excuse me. Sorry, fat easy, you won't be able to do it. Fine, stay where you are. Fine, stay where I am. Fine, Let go no of me then. You take your hands off me now. You take your hands off me. What are you going to do? Nothing. Good. <coughs> I have every just, right just to be here. Huh? <coughs> so who are you? Who do you work for? And why are you here? You stop manhandling people. You don't run this country. You report on what's going on in this country and you're trying to run it. You don't work in RTE, so could you leave? Okay, come on, out. Ready? Let's go. Come on. We've asked you to leave nicely. Come on. Let me in. I want to be on the radio. I run in the European Nations. I have every right. Okay, thanks. Just you know what I was here in protest, all right? Thank you very much.
Can you see your friend? Uh, it's the sun. Oh, uh, the sun, hang on. Why not? Hello, how are you? Well, actually, it's, it's, it's uh, Luke Ming Flanagan. Well, basically the situation uh, is that uh, there was a debate on today at the, on the one o'clock news and they invited certain candidates onto it and uh, for the umpteen time during this campaign I was left out of it. I was given the most ridiculous excuse ever, a very insulting excuse, considering that I had paid a thousand pound deposit to run in this election. Uh, fobbing me off, it's happened uh, throughout the whole election. It happened uh, pre when the election started up. I, they mentioned all the candidates that were running on prime time uh, about four or five weeks ago. And uh, I rang them up, I made a complaint about it. I was informed that only registered candidates were going to be mentioned. This was absolute crap because there were no registered candidates. Registration date hadn't come up. I pointed this out to uh, the man in RTE and I was hung up on. And numerous other incidents throughout the whole campaign. Well, I'm going to uh, basically wait until the election is over. Um, at the count on Sunday, I will be making a speech and I will be informing people in no uncertain terms that RTE are a shower of bastards. And that you can quote me on that because that's what they are. I know he's on it. No. Fanny and Zook. It's a very fancy lot of paper this time. Oh, um, look, you should have had your hair on in that picture. I Do you reckon, yeah? Yes, I do. Definite. <laughs> on the top of your head, I mean that. <laughs> no, it's fancy for a vote. I voted number one for uh, Luke Ming Flanagan, number two for uh, Paul Raymond, the recycler, and number three for Father Liam Sharkey. It's my new policy. You're letting yourself. You're still a dissent here. The Lord sent. The Lord sent. What's going on? I must have got up on 4% of the vote in Roscommon. According to the tallies that I, I've been listening to, in Donegal I got no votes, virtually none. I mean, that's uh, 100,000 100, people basically, out of 528, it's 20% of the whole area, getting virtually nothing. And I wouldn't have got anything in Cavan or Monaghan. I'd say my vote in Mayo, Roscommon and Galway was about 3.2%. 3 that's fucking excellent, like. That's brilliant. I'm delighted with that. Bandit votes 320,151. Quota 80,038. Call Campbell 1,920. Medium Flanagan 5,000. Captain of Calvary. 66,055. Dana Rosemary Scallon, 51,086. No candidate has reached the quota on this count. As there is no service for transfer, I will now proceed to exclude the following known and distribute our votes. Mitchell Flanagan, Gerard Gibbons, Sean McPass. Yay! Hoopa! <laughs> Are you ready? Yeah, well, I'm gone. Happy enough to? Oh, absolutely over the moon. Brilliant. Thanks very much. I was very happy with it now. Oh, I certainly will. Can I just say something, that this is an excellent, well-able lady who certainly gave not just me but everyone in this campaign a run for their money and she has really highlighted throughout the country the needs of the people please? of Connacht Ulster and the wonderful work she's done. We have not by any means seen the end of Marion Harkin 
let, let Ireland watch out. And I congratulate you on a magnificent campaign. Thank you very much. And Oh, I think we have an announcement. Leaving the number of continuing candidates equal to the number of seats to be played. I give John Joseph McCartan and Dana Rosemary <laughs> to be elected. <laughs> £50 fine for second offence. That's absolutely oh, brilliant. What's brilliant about it? Um, I was only fined £50 as opposed to £600. That's good. about a mile and a half out the road from uh, the town and uh, we're basically in my house. There's a lot of people out there would think that uh, I have a strange way of doing things in, in, in life anyway without moving into a, an ex-funeral home. This is the living room. I put down the floor here and knocked down a wall. There used to be a partition here. It, used to, it was a real crummy looking place. I'm not saying it's anything uh, superb now but it's, it's very livable in. And uh, this is the bathroom. And I put down the floor here as well. I haven't been able to afford, as you can see with the kitchen as well, uh, to uh, do the floors there, actually paint them. But uh, that will happen in time. And uh, down here is my bedroom to be. And I have uh, wood, enough wood similar to that to do half the floor in there, but uh, I sort of uh, ran out of uh, money then at that stage. I got as much done as I could. That's what I'll be transplanting today, out into the bog, away from, uh, away from uh, the keen eyes of the guy, the Shiakana. A lot of spikes and stuff here. I hate fucking barbed wire. That's what I'm looking for. Beautiful stuff. Mm -hmm. These are organic cannabis plants, by the way. No hitches so far. This is going too smoothly for my liking. <laughs> Quick is the great skill of a. Uh, any man who's trying to paint cannabis plants outside as quickly as fucking possible. Yeah, 
here basically down as far as near where Mike is. That's where I planted the last year. Mmm, poo! I'll tell you, never have plants been treated so well. We're grabbing her. Yeah, let's just turn her. Here, baby. God. Big stones. Too big, but it's a bit of drainage for here and there. Okay, whoa! <laughs> you scared? <laughs> That's, there's some mould growing on that. I what it is. Uh, on the peat? Yeah. Uh, that's, that's just moss. It always comes out. That's great. Cameraman has now opened the cops, it'll turn up. Like. <laughs> Instant gratification. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so get the fuck out of here, man. Don't be seeing in September, lad. Yeah, there are no carrots in the bag at all. It was all a big lie. <laughs> It's not often you roll 50 joints before your dinner, is it? Fatten them up, blow into them. This is the grass that uh, I grew out in the bog near Castlery. It's actually turned out to be quite potent, very nice. It gets you stoned, and it's free. It's not a bad combination, you know. Last week uh, in uh, Great Britain, David Blunkett uh, announced that basically uh, you wouldn't be arrested anymore for simple possession of cannabis. Uh, so it's been, in a sense, it's been decriminalized. And uh, basically, that's superb timing for me. It makes it look like uh, I planned all this in the last week and a half, which uh, I didn't, but... Uh, it might make me look very organised. So I'm going to hand the plant to uh, min the minister with special responsibility for drugs, a guy called Owen Ryan. I'm going to give him the plant. This is kind of a bit big to be uh, trying to uh, get in and out of uh, the centre of Dublin with, so I might just get that particular part and snip it off and put it in a pot, uh, a smaller pot about that size, shove it into it and uh, can present him with that. That way it's more convenient, um, it'll probably look better anyway than the big plant and uh, I get to keep the rest. The plan is basically to send a joint to uh, every elected representative and uh, every person, journalist, uh, personality in the country that uh, I can uh, get in contact with, to send them a joint and along with the joint to send them uh, a list of ten reasons as to why cannabis should be legalised. <laughs> delivered um, I presume they will they'll get notified about it anyway no uh, it's the office for tourism recreation and uh, sport it's uh, the department of uh, it's across the road from it's across the road from uh, Dal Aaron basically I will be there to meet him whether he meets me is another thing I, I, I doubt if he'll meet me actually to be quite honest because uh, that would uh, sort of uh, play into my hands as he might think Okay, Flan, chuck your law. Bye. It's quite funny, Mike. Uh, the independent newspaper's number comes up as 666666. <laughs> Does it tell you something? So how do you feel now? Um, I feel uh, quite happy. I feel uh, as if I'm about to be approached by members of the Garda Shiokana, which I am. So uh, that should be quite interesting. Good. And they're on their way now. Chuck your law, Mike. Uh, there is a cannabis plant which uh, I hope to the president to uh, yeah. Owen Ryan, Minister with Special Responsibilities for our Drugs. Yeah. Do you understand this offense they have that much? I do, I fully understand that. Sorry, excuse me. Could you just back away from the camera? 
dealing with something there at the moment. Okay, I'm a mind. journalist in my job though, that's all. I know, yeah, just give them a bit of space to sure. do, do their job, you understand? Okay. okay, thank you very much. Shane, the star, he uh, brought it back with him so I could have a smoke of it, basically. Oh, it's worked, mate. Uh, it has worked uh, a treat, like, uh, waiting for the guards to, well, basically the guards uh, detaining me and arresting me made it, like, because uh, there was nothing to see otherwise, really, like. Um, it's been a success. They're on about it on uh, RT News, and it's on Teletext, and uh, it's on the internet, and uh, I'm getting stations like the, or newspapers like the Offaly Independent contacting me. Um, what do I say? What's going to happen? Um, I could be done for supply, basically. And what does that mean? Uh, that means I could be sent to prison. But surely they wouldn't be that stupid. Okay. We'll see. by all accounts a general election coming our way and various people will be gearing up perhaps to, to get involved in that uh, and one of them I suspect is uh, here to my right all the way from County West Common. Uh, Mean, sir, Luke Finnegan, you're very welcome. Hello, how are you Martin? I'm awfully well, how are you sir? Um, I am right aren't I because uh, the election will be coming our way next year by all accounts. It will, yeah, I'll be uh, contesting the Longford uh, Roscommon constituency. We have the lowest level of GDP in the country with one of the highest rates of suicide it is not as good a place to live as it could be. Why do I think you're campaigning already? Can't I am always campaigning. <laughs> and you're still serious about the, the legalisation of cannabis. But do you yeah. think that that actually alienates pe some people from you? That they would dismiss other things that you might have to say? One of the re real reasons that uh, I want to see cannabis legalised is that uh, until it is legalised, I will continue to be followed around by members of the Garda Síochána. I will continue to accumulate a uh, criminal record. And as a result of these criminal records, tomorrow I'm going to have to go to Castlery Prison. I have oh, paid yeah. a, I, I'm outstanding £150 on a fine. I have to, as a result of not paying that fine, I will have to spend five days in Castlery Prison starting what, what's tomorrow. What's the fine for? The fine is for possession of cannabis. And as far as I'm concerned, I'm not paying it because I haven't done anything wrong. It's uh, the campaign beginning today, it has to be said. Anyway, that's your prerogative. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Mary. And um, I wish you a safe time inside and okay. we look forward to being outside again real soon. So am I. Thanks for joining us. Cheers. Hello, um, I'm wondering, can I speak to uh, Gerda Billy Malloy, please? He won't be working till Friday night. Um, but no, well, no, that's what I'm, I'm just wondering, like, when will he be calling out, like, or... Yeah, can you do that? He does, yes, yeah, definitely. Okay, fair enough. All right, thank you. Bye. Looks like I'm not going into prison today. Why? Because the guy who has the warrant had to go to Dublin today. And uh, basically, I'm going to have to wait. So, uh, happy birthday, Mike. Thanks very much. Uh, thank you? God you're around. You make me feel younger anyway. What me? I'm very happy with uh, what I've done with my life, definitely, without doubt. It's been a big success, the whole whole thing with uh, this Ming thing. Uh, is uh, I don't know, it's been, it's been brilliant. You can't, I, can't, I can't complain. I've got to experience an awful lot of stuff, do massive amount of interviews, hundreds of interviews, basically, and uh, learned a lot and got better at politics. Le learned how to uh, sort of uh, deal with the detail a lot more, basically. Fold my underpants. Uh, what do you pack for prison? Um, five pairs of underwear, five pairs of socks, five t shirts, um, loads and loads of reading material, uh, political stuff, and a couple of books, and a radio, and uh, two litres of soy milk. 
so I won't have to eat normal milk on my cornflakes. And uh, a picture of my girlfriend. Basically, the warrant was finally issued and everything is in order. And uh, basically, uh, the guard uh, in question asked me, uh, I don't know, what day would be convenient. And I said, uh, Monday. Or I said, uh, whatever, sometime at the weekend. And he said he was working on uh, the Monday. So I said, Monday is fine with me. And uh, basically, he's coming at 8 o'clock this evening as a result of that. Okay. No, that's it. I will do it. Sit down. I've been thinking of you tonight now, do it. I am it. And I have a globe up on top of me. It can't see you I don't think he's going to come in anyway. What's up? Can you take a photo there? Alright, Jude. Will you take my phone and keep it charged up and answer it for me, will you? Oh. Lovely, okay. Oh. Cheerio, Mike. <laughs> See you in five days. Um. Alright. My girlfriend is a Catholic and um, basically she believes in the Virgin Mary and she has a massive time for her. I myself would be a massive cynic but uh, I don't know, she's a good person so let her be whatever she wants. You can be, it doesn't matter uh, as, long as, you're, as long as you're a good person at the end of the day. There you go now. And how did you meet her? At um, a prayer meeting. <laughs> no, I didn't know. I'm saying I'm delighted, like you see, I, I don't know anything about it, I've never had a kid before, but uh, you know, as, at this very moment of time I'm quite happy about it. Everyone says it's probably the best thing that could ever happen to you, so everything, everyone can't be wrong, although maybe they're just saying that because they don't have a choice. I think you make a good dad. I haven't a clue, I haven't a clue. Like, everyone seems to say I will, but uh, I don't know, what do they know? They know nothing about me except for what I let them know. Saki monster. Oh. Dr. Greg Kelly, <laughs> the Fianna Fáil candidate in uh, County Roscommon. He is a neighbour of mine, he's a former doctor of mine as well. The simple facts are that in the last 10 years, alcohol uh, usage in this country has risen by 49%. The problem is costing the country £2.8 billion per year, and I don't think the government is doing enough to uh, solve this problem. Now, if Fianna Fáil actually really want to uh, do something about alcohol abuse in this country, they should provide uh, young people with more recreational facilities. Uh, for example, my hometown of Castlery has uh, 20 public houses, but it doesn't have any cinema, no indoor swimming pool, no snooker hall, no bowling hall. There is basically nothing else for young people to do. Well, when you say it's well within their rights, I think it should be, that right should be taken away from them. There's plenty of other companies out there who would sponsor them. The upside of it would be that maybe a few more people would be playing sport if they weren't sitting in the pubs all the time. Hey, Greg, good morning to you. Good, mo good morning, Dara. Greg, have you heard those comments? What's your reaction? Well, what my reaction is uh, maybe one of bewilderment, really, more than anything else. Mm. Is that uh, Fianna Fáil have been, been blamed for many things, <laughs> but uh, I think to blame them for the, the excess alcohol, uh, or the alcohol abuse in the country, I think that's a, this is mm. a new one. Mm. It's drink and it's uh, uh, drugs, which is even more serious. And uh, that's one of the things that I find inconsistent in Luke's... Um, mm. Mm. argument to that. He is banning uh, alcohol, which is a chemical that's been with us for thousands of years, and at least we have some Thank control you. over it. And, uh, and uh, on the other hand, he wants to introduce another mood-altering chemical, uh, for which, which is known to uh, be certainly as dangerous as, as tobacco, mm. Mm. and uh, uh, so, as other serious consequences. Amateur! Uh, amateur! People to, uh, more serious mood altering chemicals, more serious drugs like uh, cocaine and ecstasy and that, that, it's a, that it is a well known stepping stone and that's, there's no dispute about that. Okay, Greg, we'll leave it there for the moment. Thanks for taking the time out for taking our call. At short notice, it has to be said. Well, because I spoke well and I got my point across correctly and I made all the points I wanted to make and uh, I got a response. 
I got a reaction and uh, Greg Kelly went on the radio and came up with the usual bullshit about uh, well, for a start, he misrepresented me. He said that I was calling for a ban on alcohol, meaning the man doesn't bloody listen in the first place. I'm not calling for a ban on alcohol. Banning any substance doesn't work. That's been proven. And he also came out with a comment that cannabis led to other drugs. And according to, in front of me on the screen here, the Institute of Medicine in Washington, D.C., which is a higher authority than Dr. Greg Kelly, they say there is no conclusive evidence that the drug effects of marijuana, cannabis, are casually linked to the subsequent abuse of other illicit drugs. So, basically, I made my points correctly. He came on the radio and he told a pack of... He basically talked shite. That's what he did. Uh, Dennis Nocton. To date, I have to say, quite honestly, Greg Can Kelly is the candidate who has impressed me most in that Greg is relatively new to the political scene, although he has been a member of the Western Health Board for a considerable time since he has been nom nominated. He's been out knocking on doors. He's persistent. What about doing fuckings? Knocking on doors. What? <laughs> Stealing the politician, man. That's the fucking definition. You knock on a fucking door, like. Last night uh, went well. Basically, got a DJ and uh, held an event. It wasn't officially a fundraiser for me or anything like that. And 200 people turned up with it. 10 euros in and 400 euros expenses, so I made 1600 euro profit. Um, not ideal, but uh, still a lot of money, I'm not complaining. Oops, oh dear. Excited, um, Grant, things are going fine. That interview with the star was good. Nice to get a bit of national coverage because the other candidates won't get much national coverage. I'm going to be in the, hopefully in the Sunday Tribune anyway, and hopefully in the Star tomorrow. So that gives me an advantage over some of the other candidates. They have the advantage over me when it comes to, uh, what you might call, uh, party machines and uh, putting up posters and all that sort of stuff. But my access to the national media is worth Worth a thousand posters each, each coverage, each bit of coverage, I think, anyway. That's a marker now, without doubt. Um, we do your nomination paper there first, and I'll leave those to one side, you can do them in a minute. Mm. It is filled up, have you? Okay. I have, surely. Right, just at your description, you have politicians. Yeah, because that's what I do, that's basically what I do all the time. But you're not, you're not um, a TD, you're no, not a senator. No, but politician isn't, has nothing to do whether it's a, you're elected or not. I don't know that I can accept occupation as that, Look, I really don't know. I put myself forward to be elected. You're a candidate then? I'm a candidate, yeah. But, but you're not actually a one. politician, are you, Look. I am, yeah, because uh, I, 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 I will be able to, uh, in uh, September, I'll be bringing out uh, uh, a packet or my own brand of cigarette papers, all on the basis that I was actually a politician, basically. Well, on the looking to, on, during the last election, I ran on a policy of uh, looking to have cannabis legalised. So, as a result of my pursuits as a politician, I'm bringing out those, like, you know. So, I am. I don't, it's very hard to define it, like, you know. Well, yeah, that's why I'm asking you for your yeah. interpretation of what you meant by politician. Someone who puts themselves up for election. Yeah, but is that not somebody who has succeeded? I have succeeded. I got uh, 5,000 votes the last time. But you didn't get elected. That's different. Two votes is, is, is uh, can be defined as success if you get someone to vote for you other than yourself. <laughs> <laughs> You've convinced someone mm. to start. I don't know. Um, I'm just looking at the legislation to see if there's any help for me here in this now. The question is whether it's incorrect or whether it contains a political reference to a certain extent. I don't know. I'm being called a politician by uh, many different people, like, so if I'm going to be given that insulting name, I might as well uh, have it down as my occupation while I'm at it, like, you know. So, it occupies all my time. But what exactly do you do during the course of your business as a politician? What do you do during I, the day? I um, uh, send press releases into newspapers. I um, uh, post uh, 
animus resin to every TD in the country last and November. And it's a full-time occupation. It is, yeah. It is, yeah. It's basically, that's, it is full, it is full-time. Oh, yeah, definitely. I spend all my time promoting myself as a politician. Um, I wonder, have you a dictionary there? Grand, would you look up something for me in it? Politician. And just read out its definition. I may ask you to fax it through to me yet, but I don't know. No, you're not. I'm not. <laughs> No, I, I don't think I'll accept it, to be honest with you. I've read it. Um, it's a person engaged in or concerned with politics, especially as a practitioner. But my instructions are that I can't take something with a political reference. A politician is a political reference. Mm -hmm. Then I can't accept that. What do I put down there? Well, you can, put it, you can amend it any way you want. You can put it any other description or occupation of yourself, for yourself there. Well, what, what else can you think of? Company director? If you're a company director, I have a company director, yes. You, that, it, is, it is correct. I'm trying to it? avoid that. But look, it is correct. I mean, yeah, you are yeah. a company director. Yeah, 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 yeah. you have a company. People don't like company directors. <laughs> okay, that's grand. Thanks very much. Feeling of deja vu here, Mike. Zero percent in the poll, basically. And uh, I don't think that truly reflects my position. Maybe it does. Um, if it does, then uh, I think all politics is bullshit because I think I'm worth more than 0%. And if they're not true, which I predict they aren't true, then uh, I think uh, opinion polls are very irresponsible because they make decisions for people on the basis that, oh, I won't vote for your man because he definitely won't get elected. They'll soon discover that I'm a long way from 0% when the final uh, results are given out. All it's done is made me more determined and the fact that uh, Greg Kelly came up at 16% uh, in the polls proves that Irish politics is bullshit. I have given in because every other candidate has them up and I have very little exposure uh, as far as that's concerned and people traditionally see that as uh, election exposure. Oh, there's the posters and there's your man and there's your man and if I don't have posters up, I don't get any fucking votes. So. I need more money. I've learned that uh, I need to do uh, more door-to-door -door canvassing and I've learned that I need to meet people more and uh, not concentrate so much on uh, press releases. Uh, something that uh, I would have criticised at the start of the campaign, I now realise that it's actually essential to the campaign. It's essential because people want to meet you. People want to, someone said to me after the speech the last night in Tully's, that uh, people want to feel like they're close to you and they can make contact with you and that uh, you're actually there for them. I'm in a county now where I'm, I don't know, I'm really interested in the whole political thing. The last time would have been a bit more of a, I don't know, not, so, not a joke or anything like that, but it was a different thing. It was driven by different things, but this is awful fucking real, like, you know. It's like tonight, I'm calling to uh, the house where my outlet was born. I didn't realise how much I wanted to get elected. It's uh, I'm frustrated at the whole idea that I'd have to wait another five years before I could run for election again. Because uh, now I've learned something about the whole thing. I would have walked next door to Billy Egan, I would have knocked on his door and I went, Billy, will you vote for me with the leaflet? And I would have continued down the road until I came right back to the last house in the whole fucking constituency. And I'd have talked to everyone in length at the door. And if they wanted to talk to me, I wouldn't, I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't stop and let them talk all fucking night if they want. And I'd get votes that way because that's the way you get votes. Simple as that. 
I have, there are other ways. I know there's another way of getting it, but uh, I like that actually now that I've done it. I think it's, if you're going to be represent someone, I think you need to talk to them back, you know? So you saw you didn't do it before? Yeah, definitely. predict that I've got 750 first preference votes. I polled better than Labour, polled better than the Green Party and polled ahead of uh, what's called it, two uh, independents as well, like, so I can't complain. Ladies and gentlemen, the following is the result of the first count in the constituency of Longford, Roscommon. Flanagan, Luke, Main, Donald Party, 779. Woo! 779. Woo! Dr. Craig, in a call, 6,436, 430. No candidate has reached the quota on this count. I'm very happy with my vote. I'm very disappointed at the fact that uh, Roscommon could potentially elect three Fianna Fáil uh, TDs to this area. Well, they won't. Well, they Roscommon could. Roscommon won't. Uh, well, they potentially, yeah. Longford Roscommon yeah. could. Yeah. And uh, if they do that, I think it's uh, it's 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 a, it's a bit insulting to democracy. As far as I'm well, concerned, not, as, well, as far democracy. as I'm concerned, I believe Fianna Fáil have done nothing for Roscommon. The people of the constituency, as Charlie Hines said many years ago, the people have spoken. They're the final arbiters, and they disagree wholeheartedly with you. Uh, I don't necessarily think they disagree with me. I think they found me uh, less uh, viable to vote for because I probably didn't buy as many pints for them as a lot of the other candidates. Maybe I didn't. Uh, send uh, enough uh, leaflets in, in through their doors, and maybe I didn't put in, but enough posters, maybe well, I didn't take enough You put up plenty of posters, I saw them. I know, and there were plenty of them taken down too, and when I find too, out who yeah. take them down, I look forward to bringing them yeah. to court. Right, okay, but uh, you're happy with your vote? I'm very happy with my vote, but uh, as I said previously, I find it uh, a bit uh, strange that uh, when I'm considered to be articulate and I'm meant to understand the views that I got such a low vote, and when uh, there are certain other candidates in the field who uh, cannot ar articulate themselves, right. That they got such right. a high vote. Right. I am okay. telling it as it right. is. Okay, what are you going to do next? Are you going to run the local elections? I'm going elections? to run in the local elections and uh, I expect right. to get elected. Okay, we'll talk to you later on. Uh, uh, look. No candidate will be the quota on this account. I will now proceed to bring you the new factor, 724 votes, and a new main candidate to be held in the court of Thank you. Gone, but not gone forever. Kennedy. It's starting to look like uh, Greg will get elected. Paul, get the fuck up here. Greg Kelly has been passed out by May Sexton. 50 votes. Yes, yes, he's gone. That's what the that's what the that's what the buzz around the whole hall is. Everyone is saying he's gone by 50 votes. Not harder for me. He, w he won't go hungry because of it anyway, that's for sure. Not at all. I hope he does. He can blame me all he wants. I don't mind. I don't care. I've achieved something politically. I stopped a Fianna Fáiler getting elected. Isn't that an achievement? It's as good as the seat in itself. 
It's top Fianna Fáil getting an overall majority, possibly. <laughs> Excellent. And yet again, I point out, just in case Dr. Greg Kelly ever sees this, this is not personal. I am, I am absolutely delighted, Claire. I think we need decent representation in Dáil Éireann, not donkeys. Um, uh, I'm, I was just talking, at, uh, talking to uh, Dr. Greg Kelly's uh, wife there. I think she's a bit annoyed with me that I took 280 votes in Castlereagh. Well, all I can say is this is a big success for democracy. It's a big success against uh, the type of campaigning which involves buying people pints, slapping them on the back, shaking their hands and brainwashing them. I hope the result stands. I bloody pray for it. No candidate has reached the quota on this part. As there is one continuing I'd like to see him and I'd like to go over and shake his hand and commiserate him, but uh, I think I should leave that uh, till another time. Just let things cool down a little. It was very awkward uh, sort of campaign because he lives so close to us and there were such connections with our family, but uh, it wasn't personal. I, I criticised him on his ability to be a politician and there's nothing, uh, there's nothing personal about that. It wasn't abuse. Wrong word for it. What would you call it? I'd call it... Um, uh, running for election, that's what I call it. It's a lovely election, isn't it? Don't be wasting your man's battery. <laughs> this is for Bertie Hearn. This is for Mary Arnie, the big fat one. 